Today, Della and I are going to work on a topic that some people really struggle with, and that is the difference between a conservative and a non-conservative force and what it does to the energy of an object as, uh, as the force is applied. In this particular lesson, we are going to first start off by looking at the difference between the two terms, both non-conservative and conservative forces. Um, we use the word uh, mechanical energy to define both of those terms, so we'll make sure that we address what mechanical energy is. And then finally, we will run a simulation to show you what happens when forces are considered conservative versus forces that are considered not conservative. And then we will show you a video to finish this off. Our first term to define is a conservative force. Uh, as it says here, a conservative force is basically a force that will not change the total mechanical energy of an object uh, that's in a system. Basically, what that means is that it will convert from one form of mechanical energy to another. Uh, in the next slide, we'll see that mechanical energy has two forms, uh, kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, or potential energy, which is the energy of position. And all we'll see is it would move back and forth. That is to say that it obeys the law of conservation of mechanical energy. Okay, our first type of mechanical energy is a potential energy. Potential energy is an energy that you have based off of some kind of position or stored energy. Uh, according to our statement here, it says that potential energy is a stored energy and which is associated with the positions of the objects. When we're talking about gravity, uh, that position is based off of how high off of the ground you are. And it's arbitrary. You can pick any particular spot you want. As long as the spot you identify as zero remains zero, you'll just measure from that spot. And the potential you have is just based off of compared to that spot. Uh, the terms that are important in potential energy will be your mass. The bigger you are, the more potential you would have. Um, gravity itself, so if you have more gravity on a particular planet, the more energy you would have. And also the height that you lift it. So those three factors combined together will result in your potential energy that you would have. Our second form of uh, mechanical energy is kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is based off of a couple of things. First of all, it's the object due to your motion. And there will be two uh, important factors here. Ke will be 1 half mv squared, those two factors being mass and velocity. So kinetic energy is based off of your mass and your speed squared. Now, kinetic energy and potential energy together make up your mechanical energy. And as long as those forms don't, you don't gain or lose any of those forms, you have conservation of energy, and therefore that means that those forces that are applying, being applied to it are considered conservative forces. So we're going to pause in just a moment, and we're going to go look at um, a PHET simulation on the Energy Skate Park to show you these types of forces. Okay, we have moved over to the simulation, and we see the skater dude going up and down on the ramp at the moment. If you'll notice, uh, Dell is pointing at him, and you can see that there is a pie chart above him. And the pie chart is basically just showing what's happening to the two energy forms as he's going back and forth. You'll notice at the top he's blue, and down here at the bottom he's green. Back to blue, and then he's green again. So what we're seeing is that basically he's just switching from this blue stuff to this green stuff. Well, what that actually is, if we look over to the right-hand side, we see a bar graph that's going up and down. Now, what you will notice is that the kinetic energy goes up and down. And it's at its lowest at the top and at its highest um, when it's down at the bottom. So we see that the Ke is going up and down. At the same time, the potential energy, the blue bar graph, is going in the exact opposite order. So basically what we can see here is that the kinetic and potential are basically both going up and down but opposite of one another. In fact, if you look over at the yellow bar graph, you'll notice that the total energy, meaning if I added the Ke and the Pe at any given time, they will always be the same thing. This is what it means to be conservative. We're saying that the energies are just switching from one form to another, but you're never losing mechanical energy. So what we know here, then, is that gravity is a conservative force. Now, you might say, well, what about the normal force? Well, the normal force in this particular case is perpendicular to the way he's moving. So if we tried the work equation of work equals FD cosine theta, um, the cosine theta will be 90 degrees. So the normal force actually is not accomplishing any work here. Therefore, it won't change any of the energy. So although it is present, it is not influencing anything because there is no friction that's generated in this particular simulation. All right, we are going to return back to the PowerPoint in just a moment to explain what we're going to look at when we're seeing non-conservative forces. Okay, so resuming our PowerPoint, we see here that conservative forces then are forces that will not change your total mechanical energy. The number one and most important one for this chapter that we will see is the gravitational force. So gravitational force, all it does is switch you from one form to the other, but it does not decrease or increase your mechanical energy. Your mechanical energy stays the same. 
Um, we will learn two others as the year goes on, that being elastic force and also electric force, but they're beyond the scope of what we're doing at the moment. All right, our uh, final category of forces are your non-conservative forces. These are going to be the forces that are going to change your mechanical energy of the objects. Basically, the longer you travel and the longer you're exposed to these forces, the more energy, or I should say mechanical energy, they're going to take out of your system. For example, friction would be in that case. The longer you travel, the more friction will slow you down. Eventually, you will run out of energy. Tension can do the same thing. If you pull on something with a rope, the longer you pull on it, the more you'll accelerate it. Therefore, the more speed you'll have. Therefore, the more mechanical energy you'll have. Um, normal force can do the same thing if you ran into a wall or fell out of an airplane and hit the ground. These would change your energies. What we see in parentheses here is that when a non-conservative force is applied, that energy is transformed into non-mechanical forms, such as light, heat, or sound. So the law of conservation of energy still applies, just not the law of conservation of mechanical energy. So the energy just switches to a form that we can't account for in this chapter. Okay, now we're back at the PHET simulation again. And now what we're going to do is add a non-conservative force to the problem, that in the form of friction. So if you look, Della is going to click on track friction over on the right-hand side, and she's going to click it. And we can add a coefficient of friction, meaning that friction will become an important uh, issue. So as she adds a little bit of friction, you'll see, and that looks good enough, as the skater goes up and down, we'll notice that the kinetic and potential energy that we once had are still oscillating back, up, back and forth, but the thermal energy is continuing to increase. That is saying that the energy that we had is slowly turning into another form, and eventually it's going to finally run out. Now, if you notice, he has stopped moving. The kinetic energy is now zero. We see no more green, but there still is potential energy. And the reason there is potential energy is only because we randomly chose potential energy, energy to be zero at the ground. So she's still above the ground. So if someone cut a hole on the track, she would fall um, and then eventually run out of that energy too. But if we just simply dragged the PE bar up here um, and put it at his standing point, we would see that he technically also would have run out of potential if that was our zero spot. So all of the energy is turned into another form. That's what it means to be non-conservative. The energy is turned from mechanical energy into other forms. Okay, we're going to show you one final video clip here just to show you where the energy goes when non-conservative. Okay, in this clip we have a workout guy, and the workout guy is basically going to throw the ball up in the air. So when he applies a force with, force with his hands, he's going to introduce a non-conservative force. The more he follows through, the higher he would be able to throw it, so he's going to give it some energy to go up in the air. We're then going to watch the conservative force of gravity kick in, and it'll just basically stop the ball and bring it back down. But the ball should want to keep moving, and what we're going to see is that his hands are going to stop it. And then you'll also notice where some of the energy goes if you listen carefully. That crunch, catch the ball, and return to the start position again. So from here... Okay, if you notice, what happened here is that every time the ball hit his hand, you could hear the thumping sound, and that's where some of that mechanical energy went. Okay, some of it also went to the form of heat and other various forms, but we could clearly hear the sound when we did that. Okay, hopefully this lesson helped you a little bit with the idea of the difference between a conservative and a non-conservative force. If you are still struggling with this idea, certainly feel free to stop by after school, and we can discuss the matter in more detail.